Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. Father, I come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, I need your help. I need your guidance this morning. Father, I ask, Lord, that you take over my body right now in the name of Jesus. Help me to deliver this word that you have put on my heart. May you anoint our ears to hear what you want us to hear this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34, in the beginning of the chapter of Mark chapter 5, Jesus had gotten to a boat and he was traveling to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And when he got to the other side, there was a lot of people. I mean, there was a mass crowd that was following him because he had been healing, doing a lot of miracles. But there was one certain guy, he was a leader of the local synagogue by the name of Jairus, that met him there. And he fell to Jesus' his, his feet and says, Lord, help me. I, I, I need you to help my daughter because she's dying. But as they were traveling, as they were walking to Jerry's, Jerry's house, they came upon a woman. And we put, pick up in verse 25 of Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 5. And it says this. Now a certain woman, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I only may I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude around you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now I want to talk about seven things that happened in this story. Now you have this woman, she had an issue of blood. And she suffered for 12 years. Now she was considered an outcast. No, she, she was not allowed to touch nobody because she was labeled unclean because she had this issue of blood. And so she couldn't go to the temple. But she heard Jesus was coming. You know, she had spent all that she had. You know, many of us, whenever we have problems, and this is the title of the, today's sermon is The Problem Solver. And when we have problems, we go out and spend money and, and this and that on doctors and therapists and everything like that. But why don't we go to the problem solver, which is Jesus Christ? She spent all she had, but she grew worse. She suffered with the issue of blood. She spent all she had. And she grew worse. I remember when I was sick. Lord help me. And I was growing worse and worse. And my goodness, I, I thought I was going to die. Many of us think that whenever we go through a physical sickness, a spiritual sickness, it's getting worse and worse. We think it's over. But she heard about Jesus. You know, we hear about Jesus every day. Many of the uh, many believers or many people that proclaim to be uh, Christians, they hear about Jesus. 
And she heard about him. She heard that, she, that he was coming. She heard that he was doing miracles. He was performing uh, miracles and, and healing. A lot of people nowadays, they, they believe in miracles, but they don't want to come to Jesus. They just want it right then and now. She heard about Jesus, but she came to him. Do you come to Jesus every day or do you come to Jesus only on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, Friday nights? Do you come to Jesus? She came to she she did what she had to do in order to see him, to be with him. She knew that if she would be right there where he's at, she would get healed. She touched him. Do you need a touch of Jesus today? We all need a touch of Jesus. In our minds, our hearts, physically, mentally, spiritually, we need a touch from Jesus. And she was healed. When you've been dealing with something for 12 years, my goodness, you would dance, you would run, you would jump, you would shout. When I was in in youth camp growing up with the Assemblies of God Church, we would go to youth camps in the summer. And there was this young kid. And I would see him every morning and every night when we had service. That he would run, he would jump, he would dance. I like, I've never seen somebody dance before. Not like break dancing, but he would just, he would just dance. And I was sitting in the back one one service with a pastor at the time and he came up to her and said you know why I dance because when one day I was helping my dad fix his truck and the jacks went down and they crushed him and he died on the way to the hospital and he was in the hospital for several several months but then God God touched him God healed him and he, he told God Lord, Lord if 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 you could heal me, I will serve you all the days of my life. I would, will worship you like I never worshipped you before. And we would see him run. We would see him dance. And now he's a pastor at, at a church, I think, in Houston. But man, he, he danced. He had joy. And some of us, when we come through the doors of the church, we come in sad. There's no joy. That's why I ask you every single day, do you have joy this morning? Do you have joy when you come to the house of the Lord? You know, in Mark chapter 2, you don't have to go there, but in Mark chapter 2, when Jesus healed the, the paralytic, the guy that was paralyzed, Jesus was, was in a room, was in a house. And there were so many people inside that house. And they were trying to get this man in to see Jesus. And he had friends that had faith that carried this, this man that couldn't walk. And so what did they do? They went up to the roof and dug a hole big enough to lower him into the room. And said, surely if this man, or our friend, were to, were to be with Jesus, were, were Jesus were to touch him, he would be healed. And that was the faith of their friends, of his friends. Do we have faith like that when we're going through something? When we when we're going through a spiritual problem, a physical problem, do, do you have faith that Jesus can heal you? These are two stories here. This woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. Some of us have spiritual problems that are longer than that. Ask the Lord to heal you. Ask the Lord to help you. In Mark chapter 6, verse 56, in Mark chapter 6, verse 56 says this, Wherever he entered Jesus into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might not just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. That's what they did. They laid people that were physically sick 
in the marketplaces and beg, Lord, we know that you can heal. And he healed him. You know, one of the greatest miracles to ever happen is when one gives their lives over to Jesus Christ. That's the greatest miracle. They're, they were once dead spiritually, but when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you get back up and you are alive in Jesus. And many people, they hear, oh, this person got saved. Oh, praise the God. That's good. That's good. They don't rejoice. Angels rejoice when, when one soul is saved. But nowadays, people just, that's good. You know, that's one more person that can feel the pews in, in the church. And that's how people think sometimes. But when you are truly in Jesus Christ and one person gets saved, you rejoice. You rejoice. You've been praying for that person for, for many years. You have family members that are just going to hell if they were to die today. And you've been praying and praying and praying. You've been coming to prayer meetings. But the devil can cause doubt and say, what's the point of going? You've been praying for so many years. They're going to go to hell anyway. That's how the world thinks. That's how the devil wants you to think. Keep praying. Go to the prayer meetings. Attend prayer. We're going to join you in prayer. But don't give up. This woman never gave up. This man that was paralyzed, that had his friends carry him. They didn't give up. So why should we give up? The world's going to tell you to give up. Don't go to church. There's no point in attending service. Look at this beautiful day. You can be in Galveston. You can be at the beach. You can do whatever you want. But don't attend church. There's no use for that. That's what the world tells you. But as believers of Jesus Christ, we have faith but continue to grow in your faith in Jesus. Whenever you pray, whenever you attend a prayer meeting, your faith is activated. Be in prayer. You know, as a nation, we have problems. We have serious, serious problems as a, as a nation. And it is a sin problem. A lot of people don't see it that way. Well, we got crazy people here, crazy people over there. This world is all crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. And we don't have a gun problem. It is a sin problem. It's a spiritual problem. Amen. And that's what many people say. Hey, you know, you got to send these people that are that are shooting and everything like that. Send them to the, the psychic ward and everything like that. No, they need to be touched by God. And that and that's what people do. You know, you you need help. They'll send you to a therapist. The therapist will, will prescribe you medicine and, and, and all that stuff. You know, you need all this. No, you need a touch from Jesus Christ. But a lot of people don't believe that. You know, the murders that are that are happening. Murders are, are murder cases are rising in Houston all over this nation. And, you know, they're they're killing a lot of uh, Asian American people, you know, I'm praying for them. But the thing that they don't talk about in the news, the thing that they don't talk about hardly ever. Well, what about the unborn? What about abortion? Amen. There's 70 million plus babies that are being aborted. And this nation says it's OK. You can do it. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Don't worry about it. They have no voice. They have no voice. But in the church, we're going to talk about it because if we can't talk about you, then what's the point of meeting together? We need to talk about this kind of stuff. You know, pretty soon. The things that we say in this church. The, the things that we preach about, Pastor Michael preaches about, Pastor Honor preaches about, we might go to jail for that. You never know what could happen. People may bust through these doors and say, well, we've been hearing what you've been preaching about. We hear, we see the videos. Come on, come with us. And what's going to happen if that, that, day, that day comes? 
I'm not afraid to go to jail for Jesus Christ. He wasn't afraid to die on the cross for me. Why should I be afraid to go to jail for him? You know, last Sunday, they had the Grammy Awards on TV. And I haven't watched one of those in a while. But I decided to watch it. And my goodness, there's many secular artists that I've never heard before. But golly, it's, it's, if, just like you were watching a, a porn. Because they were just half naked. And this is what they feed our kids. And this is what our kids are watching and saying that it's okay. Well, if they're saying that it's okay to, to you know, change your gender, go ahead. If it's, it's okay to be homosexual, go ahead. The devil is having a field day and he is the prince of this world. You know, they want to cancel this, cancel that. How about we cancel that music that, that they have? Talks about sex and everything. No, nobody wants to hear about the blood of Jesus. Nobody wants to hear about, you know, I saw the light one glad morning when this life is over, I'm going to fly. Well, they want to hear about that. That's just a boring song that's written way back in the 20s, 30s, 40s. But they don't want to hear about that. They just want to hear what they want to hear. And what makes them feel good. And people are so worried about offending people. But they could care less about offending God. Amen. Oh we can't, we can't offend that person. We can't offend that person. You know they might do something to me. I don't want to offend my God. But you as a nation we offended God so much. By spinning his face and say yes. We're going to make homosexual marriage legal. You know, I love homosexual people. I love them. But as God says, be imitators of God. We need to hate what he hates. And he hates sin. We need to hate sin. We need to be holy, just like our God, for he is holy. And we need to be holy. But the church, there's some churches that say, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's okay if you want to go that way. Go ahead. We'll marry you. It's okay. They're playing games. You know, th this nation is, is, is just so backwards. They're saying that the election is rigged. Russia helped us and all this. Everything's rigged. One thing is not rigged. It's going to be judgment day. That's not going to be rigged. That day you're going, you're going, it's either you're going to be in heaven or hell. You're not going to say, oh, well, the devil, he rigged it. No. You make a choice right now while you're still alive. Are you going to go to heaven? Are you going to serve Jesus or are you going to serve the devil? Amen. A part-time Christian cannot defeat a full-time devil. You can't be a part-time Christian and have, your, have one foot in the world, one, one foot in Jesus Christ. The devil hates you. The devil hates that you're, you, that you're here right now. And he causes every distraction imaginable for you not to be in this place this morning. And to be in fellowship with your brothers and sisters. But God is so passionate about you. He loves you. Amen. He wants the best for you. And we, when, when we unite together as the body of Christ, there's power. But we let the outside world tell you, man, don't worry, man. And the kids nowadays, they, they believe everything that they hear on TV. They believe everything that, that goes on in public schools and what, they, when, what each other say. We need to be in prayer. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the dark, the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. We don't hate people. But the devil, he comes at you to destroy your walk with Christ, to kill you. 
And a lot of people don't get that. They're just playing games. Are you tired of, of playing games? Your heavenly father loves you to a point where he wants the best for you. But a lot of us just, we don't care. Where is our faith gone? Some of our faith is in politics. Some of our faith is, is in the president. And we pray for your president. Pray for your leaders. Pray for their salvation. But so many people are just, they're having their faith in, in everything else but Jesus. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and we have read this in, in church. And a lot of churches have read this going to prayer meetings. And 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. This nation does not want to They don't want to. They don't want to seek the face of God anymore. And it breaks my heart because I remember in the 80s, 90s when we went to church and my grandparents, my mom and dad, they would seek the face of God. We would seek the face of God. Altar calls would be four hours long. Now we hardly ever see that. People just don't want to want to attend church anymore. They just want to stay at home and watch online. I thank God for the internet that we can be able to broadcast all over the world the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we need to get back to seeking the face of God. Seeking his will. Seeking guidance and wisdom and understanding that only comes from him. But this nation does not want to turn from its wicked ways. But Grace Christian Center, when God calls us to prayer, we need to be in the house to pray. I've known that all my life, that when we get together and pray, there is power. I was brought up to believe in prayer. I was brought up to, to seek the face of God. That every time that I was I was to come and play the instrument. I would be at the altar for an hour to pray before I got up on the instrument because it was an honor and privilege to be able to lead people into praise and worship. We need to get back to that. So many people have a passion, but for the wrong thing. You know, as I was coming this morning, I, was, I got here before the sun come up. And there was people already at the baseball fields. But when you tell them, come to church, oh, it's too early. 10 o'clock's too early. Man, you're at the baseball field at 7 o'clock in the morning. And then when football season comes, there are people tailgating out at NRG Stadium. And they're in line. I mean, in line at 5, 4 or 5 in the morning waiting for the gates to open so they can start cooking and start drinking. That stuff's only going to satisfy you temporarily. But Jesus, he's going to give you eternal life in him. Amen. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. It says, come to me all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you burdened this morning? Do you have something that is bothering you? Do you have something that, Lord, I can't do this no more. If you have time to complain about your burden, then you have time to pray about it. 
We complain so much. Oh, Lord, Lord, this Lord. Help me, help me. You know, you complain and complain and complain and complain. But have you prayed about it? Have you prayed? Now, that is one thing I was taught at a young age. To go to the Lord in prayer. I was sharing with my wife this morning that I was eight years old when I was, you know, when I first taught, they, they taught me, before you get up in the instrument, you pray for an hour. And here's an eight-year-old kid going at the altar praying. I was like, well, what do I pray for the next 58 minutes? <laughs> you know, you're praying, Lord, thank you. Let, let me, Lord, just, you know, be with me as I go on the drums. But what do you pray for the next 58 minutes? And I would fall asleep. And the lady that encouraged me to play drums, the Lord's was there. She's still alive, and I praise God. She would have to wake me up sometimes because I would fall asleep. But hey, but hey, you're in the presence of God and you were taught to pray, to be in prayer, to go to prayer in everything, every decision. You know, 3 John chapter 1, verse 4, 3 John chapter 1, verse 4 says this. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Do you walk in truth today? And what is truth? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. People are saying There's only, there are so many ways to get to heaven. You don't have to attend church. You just, just do something good for somebody and be good, and that's it. You don't have to believe in Jesus. You don't have to do this. The person that said that the most was Oprah Winfrey. The queen of daytime television. And many people follow her. And still do. But there is only one way to get to heaven. And that is through Jesus Christ. When the world tells you one thing. And I pray. I pray for our kids. You know. We have little kids here. You know Benjamin, Nathan. Now, Emma, that comes. I pray as they get older that they will know the truth. You know, my son, <laughs> we were, I want to share this. We were on the road going to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's in Jiu Jitsu. I'm not, you know, I can't go on the ground that much. But he, we have him in Jiu Jitsu. And on the road, we played that song here, Hallelujah Chant. And I played it, and this boy was just singing his little heart out. He could barely pronounce the words, but he was singing and singing and singing. And so on the way over there, it's about a 20, 25 minute ride. And on the way over there, he had me play it six times. <laughs> six times. And on the way back, you know, he came running to me. He goes, okay, let's go, Dad. And then on the way back, he goes, let's play the song again. And so I bought a uh, little portable radio that has a little microphone hooked up to it. And you can karaoke and everything. And hear that boy singing that song again. But when you teach your kids at a young age, they're not going to forget it. Amen. You know, as I was raised in church, and I thank God for my parents. You know, they instilled biblical values in me that's what we need to do with our kids the world's going to tell them the, world's gonna, the world is going to get worse and worse and worse but we need to instill biblical values in our kids I don't know what's going to happen I don't know what's going to happen this week next week but it's going to get worse and worse to, to the point where some of us in this room are going to be filled with fear. And I pray that doesn't happen. But keep your focus in Jesus Christ. Keep your focus on his word. Because there are going to be times in the near future where we're not going to be able to meet like this. That's why we always say read the word. 
Read it. Apply it. Because when, we, when we're not able to meet anymore, you have the word in here and in here. And when they take the, the word away from us, we're going to have the word instilled in our hearts. And I thank God for this school. Grace Christian School, because our kids are learning scripture. They're being taught the word of God. Not just their, their, their regular subjects, but the word of God. Yeah. And in public schools, they're going to be taught that homosexual, that homosexuality is okay. That you can change your body. It's okay. Let's be in prayer. There's a song that I want to read the lyrics. I'm not going to sing because I'm not a singer. I'm not talented like Brother Devin or Pastor Michael. But God gave me the, to, the talent to play drums like the best drummer in the world, bro, uh, Brother Ethan. So praise God. But this song was written, I think back in the 80s or 70s, by Andre Crouch. And the song called Through It All. You know, we have all had problems in our lives. But through it all, God has been there for us. Spiritual problems, physically, physical problems. But God has been there. And I want to read the verses and the chorus. In verse 1, it said, I have many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me a blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. And through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. In verse 2, said, I thank God for the mountains. And I thank God for the valleys. I thank him for the storms that he brought me through. For well, if I ever had a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. I'll never know what faith in God could do. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. The last verse said, I've been to lots of places. I've seen lots of faces. There's been times I felt so all alone. But in my lonely hours, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus lets me know that I'm his own. He lets you know that he that you are his own. Praise God. You know, some of us have been lonely. We're like, Lord, where are you? He's there. He's been there. But he he, he, he lets you know that you're his own, that you're, it is, it is such a privilege and an honor to be called child of the Most High God, amen? amen? We get to sing songs. We get to push back the gates of hell. You know, the moment you become a Christian, the moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a terrorist to the devil. Because you get to terrorize the devil. Don't let him terrorize you, but you terrorize him. And remind him of his future. And what's his future? He's going to the lake of fire. Amen. So right now, while his time is short, he wants to terrorize you. He wants to, to destroy you of your ministry. He wants to destroy your family, kill your family, turn your kids, on, on, you know, turn your kids against you. He wants to cause division, cause doubt, cause chaos. And that is what he's doing right now. But as we get closer to Jesus, as we continue to serve him. Keep your eyes focused on him. 
The title of this message is The Problem Solver. Do you have problems this morning? Do you? Are you battling with a sickness this morning? With a spiritual sickness? Then like that lady with the issue of blood, reach out and touch the hem of his garment. We have to sometimes get on our knees and cry out, Lord, I need you. I just need to touch you. Meet him. He wants to meet you. He wants to have daily conversation with you. He wants to be in communion with you. Don't ever neglect being in communion with Jesus Christ. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And we can't love each other without first him loving us and showing us his love. We have no love. We have no joy. We have no peace. And let us do Jesus Christ. I've said this a week ago. You know, we're going to go through trials. We're going to go through tribulations. We're going to go through heartache. But you know, as Christians, and like I said, it is, it is a privilege to be called a child of the Most High God. But as Christians, we are the only people on earth that can grieve and have joy at the same time. You know, some, somebody close to me may pass away. I'm going to agree, but I'm going to have joy at the same time. I'm going to have peace. I'm going to have strength. God, we're so blessed. Amen. We're so blessed. Those that are watching online. If you never, never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day. I do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. Things are getting worse and worse day by day. But if you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, invite Him in your heart. Repent. Repent of your sins. We preach the cross of Jesus Christ in this church for a reason. Because we do not want anybody to go to hell. God does not want anybody to go to hell. But he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to call you his own. But you have a choice to make. You have a choice. I cannot make that choice for you. You're either going to choose heaven or hell. That is your choice. But I pray. That if you're in sin. I pray that you repent. And what does repent mean? To turn away from that sin. And turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to Him. And if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and if you want to make that decision today, go ahead and pray. Pray that prayer. Just acknowledge that you're a sinner, that you're in need, that you're in need of a Savior. And God will transform your heart and your mind. And if you need... Somebody talk, you can contact Grace Christian Center. Contact the pastors and we will help you. But God loves you so much. He loves you so much. Reach out and touch the hem of his garment in faith. Don't let the world tell you otherwise. Don't let the world tell you that there's no power in in prayer, that there's no power in church. There's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And it will never, never go away. There's always going to be that power there. So I invite you, accept Jesus into, into your heart. With every eye closed in this place this morning.